how I'm going to be this age 32 back that I have to play today. We're looking at this very small game. It's a two-taking game called Duo. It is by uh, Zerua Games. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. For two or three players, it takes about 20 minutes. And it is on and opens up like this. It's a little wallet-sized game. There's a scan thing if you want to see the full rules. And it just opens up and you get all the rules on the inside. It's a really neat way of doing a little wallet-sized game. That being said, I do have some concerns about if I'm going to be able to see this if I open it up a billion times, it might get damaged, right? And also this being right on the fold, that's going to eventually wear out and be hard to read too, I imagine. Same with that one, but minor things. Very interesting concept. This is all about celestial cards and celestial spirits that are awake, asleep, fighting, dancing, always changing. The battle of the spirits, awakening your celestials and also learning your opponent to win the sky is you got. These are the suits and it's a kind of a bird, a fist, a snake, and a bunny. And this side talks about the cards. The reason why it's called dual is because each card has two suits on it. Two spirits, if you will. And it's also on for backs of cards. So you're always going to know what your cards, what your opponents have. And they're going to know what you have, at least in terms of suit. And whether or not they're awake or not. Cards on top are going to be considered awake. Cards on the bottom are going to be considered asleep. What that means is when you, I play this card to a trick, I'm playing the four of snakes, not the six of bunnies. What you're going to do is start off. Uh, what you're trying to do is win the most points by the end of the fifth round. Each round's going to last six or nine tricks, depending, or six or nine bouts, or tricks, if you will, depending on how many players are, you're playing, if it's two or three. And what you're going to do for the setup, you're going to need a pen and paper to keep track of score, all the players stuff with all the cards. You're going to cut the deck in two, rotate one half, 90 degrees, and you can mix them up some more. This way, you got a nice mix of each suit being awake and or asleep. You can deal out all the cards. And you need to keep... Well, turn these around so that... These are the awake, and these are the awake. We'll turn mine face up so we know what I have. You did, cannot change the orientation. You want to keep them as dealt for the sleep and awake purposes. And there's no reason to change the order because you're not playing two at a time or anything like that. That is also stars along the sides, anywhere from one to five, which represents the value on one side of the card. So this is a one and this one, two and this two. Three and there's three, five, and five, and then the four with a six. Now, to point out, every card adds up to ten. So four and six is ten. Seven and three, nine and one, eight and two, seven and three, five and five, etc. etc. It's an interesting element. It's nice enough hard work, but what it is. And the way it's going to work. And you're going to cycle the dealer clockwise each round. Whoever is left of the dealer becomes a starting player. And what you're going to do is one person is going to lead. You do what is called the bout or trick. And say I lead with this eight. And we're going for the yellow suit. My opponent must play one of the yellow cards if they have. If they don't, they can go off suit. In this case, they will. And they can play, let's say they play this. Well, let's see what this one is. It doesn't matter. <laughs> They're going to play this one. And whoever plays the highest card, the suit led, wins the trick. If we go off suit, then you're going to look at who has the most stars to determine the winner. And if there's a tie, then it's whoever went later, I believe.
Uh, so bear with me a second. Yeah, or, or, earlier, whoever played earlier, consider I. So if there was a tie in the stars, if it went off suit, if he played, if I play an eight and they played this eight, we have two stars each, it's going to be whoever went earlier. That would be me. In this case, we both went on suit. I know it's confusing, but I play the yellow eight, they play the yellow two. So I win and I collect these cards. Now, whoever plays the lowest card can designate any player, including themselves, to use the wind power. What wind power does is forces somebody to flip all their cards face down, turning their awake cards asleep and their sleep cards awake. You might want to do this if you see your opponent has some cards, um, has a lot of, you know, a suit that they're going to use against you. And you want to put that, you know, suit to sleep and get some benefits for yourself, perhaps. But you don't have to do that, of course, for wind power. Whoever plays the highest card always becomes a new stunning player. And they lead again, so maybe I play this eight of purple, they're going to play a purple card, they play, uh, doesn't matter, they'll just play this two, I win again, um, let me see if I can play something they don't have a lot of, mm. well, I'm going to play another purple here, and they're going to play a purple, I win again, and then I'm going to leave purple again. Now, they don't have any purple, so they can play anything else. So maybe they play this one yellow to sort of suit themselves. In this case, because we went off suit, we're going to look at the stars. They have the most stars, so they win. You continue doing this until all the cards are played. Let's just continue. Why not? So they're going to play this reddish color, and they're going to beat my reddish color. Then they play again a reddish color. We have to go off suit. So I'm going to play this three. I got more stars, so I win. Maybe I play seven. They're going to play this nine. Now they're going to play this card. I will beat it with a five. Because it's a four. And then I play this one. They're going to play this. They have more stars, so they win. They run off suit. So then, let's go into scoring. Scoring is kind of interesting. You're going to need a pen and paper for this. And you're going to look at, first of all, who won the most cards. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I win the most cards. Whoever has the most cards is going to draw a circle. Then you're going to look at who won the last bout. I think that was... Mm, was it me? I think it was. No, it was my opponent. They're going to get an X. If you have a circle, you put the X in the circle. And you're going to look at each five that was one, and you get one star for each five that was one. So I have one five. I get one star. My opponent also gets one star. You're going to play through five rounds. And at the end, you're going to see who wins using what it says here. So every lone star is worth one point. Every lone circle is worth two points. Every circle that has an X in it is worth four. And every set of three stars is worth one point. Whoever has the most points wins. I think it's a interesting trick-taking game. Nice quality cards with a linen finish. But then China, I believe. Uh, it's an interesting idea. With the dual suits and everything and the sleep awake suits uh the scoring is also a very interesting idea where you get points for having the most cards winning the last trick and for each five that you have of which there's two fives and most points wins i also like this how they put the rules on the inside it's really cool so that is dual i like it thumbs up i do have two more games from them that i got on kickstarter Zero games that I will check out in September. Stay tuned for that. Comment, like, subscribe. And what you think? And check out more videos, how to play deck reviews. We'll see you. Thanks for watching.